Okay, let's continue with Because of Winn-Dixie. We're on Chapter 15. Um, we just learned that Gloria Dump has done some bad things in her past, and she has a tree that uh, has bottles all over it so that um, it's like to keep away the ghosts of the things she's done wrong. And she gave o um, Opal some good advice about um, judging people for what they are doing right now and not what they have done in the past. Um, we still have the Dewberry brothers who are um, teasing Opal and Opal doesn't really seem to care for them, but Gloria is trying to ha um, tell Opal to become friends with them. So we'll see how that turns out in the end. All right, chapter 15. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library's air conditioning unit didn't work very good and there was only one fan. And from the minute me and Winn-Dixie got in the library, he hogged it all. He lay right in front of it and wagged his tail and let it blow his fur all around. Some of his fur was pretty loose and blew right off of him like a dandelion puff. I worried about him hogging the fan, and I worried about the fan blowing him bald. But Miss Fanny said not to worry about either thing. That Winn-Dixie could hog the fan if he wanted, and she had never in her life seen a dog made bald by a fan. Sometimes when Miss Franny was telling a story, she would have a fit. They were small fits, and they didn't last long. But what happened was she would forget what she was saying. She would just stop and start to shake like a little leaf. And when that happened, Winn-Dixie would get up from the fan and sit right at Miss Franny Block's side. He would sit up tall, protecting her, with his ears standing up straight on his head like soldiers. And when Miss Franny stopped shaking and started talking again, Winn-Dixie would lick her hand and lie back down in front of the fan. Whenever Miss Franny had one of her fits, it reminded me of Winn-Dixie in a thunderstorm. There were a lot of thunderstorms that summer, and I got real good at holding on to Winn-Dixie whenever they came. I held on to him and comforted him and whispered to him and rocked him just the way he tried to come just the way he tried to comfort Miss Franny when she had her fits. Only I held on to Winn-Dixie for another reason, too. I held on to him tight so he wouldn't run away. It all made me think about Gloria Dump. I wondered who comforted her when she heard those bottles knocking together, those ghosts chattering about the things she had done wrong. I wanted to comfort Gloria Dump, and I decided that the best way to do that would, to, would be to read her a book, read it to her loud enough to keep the ghosts away. And so I asked Miss Franny, I said, Miss Franny, I've got a grown up friend whose eyes are going on her and I would like to read her a book out loud. Do you have any suggestions? Suggestions, Miss Franny said, yes, ma'am. I have suggestions. Of course I have suggestions. How about Gone with the Wind? What's that about, I asked her. Why, said Miss Franny, it's a wonderful story about the Civil War. The Civil War, I said. Do not tell me you have never heard of the Civil War. Miss Franny Block looked like she was going to faint. She waved her hands in front of her face. I know about the Civil War, I told her. That was the war between the South and the North over slavery. Slavery, yes, said Miss Franny. It was also about states' rights and money. It was a terrible war. My great-grandfather fought in that war. He was just a boy. Your great-grandfather? Yes, ma'am. Litmus W. Block. Now there's a story. When Dixie yawned real big and lay down on his side with a thump and a sigh, I swear he knew that phrase, now there's a story. And he knew it meant we weren't going anywhere real soon. Go ahead and tell it to me, Miss Franny, I said. And I sat down cross-legged next to Winn-Dixie. I pushed him and tried to get him to share the fan, but he, he pretended he was asleep and he wouldn't move. I was all settled in and ready for a good story when the door banged and pinch-faced Amanda Wilkinson came in. Winn-Dixie sat up and stared at her. He tried out a smile on her, but she didn't smile back. And so he lay down again. I'm ready for another book, Amanda said, slamming her book down on Miss Franny's desk. Well, said Miss Franny, maybe you wouldn't mind waiting. I am telling India Opal a story about my great-grandfather. You are, of course, more than welcome to listen. It will just take a minute. 
Amanda sighed a real big dramatic sigh <sighs> and stared past me. She pretended like she wasn't interested, but she was. I could tell. Come sit over here, said Miss Franny. I'll stand. Thank you, said Amanda. Suit yourself, Miss Franny shrugged. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Litmus. Litmus W. Block. Okay, chapter 16. Litmus W. Block was just a boy when the firing on Fort Sumter occurred, Miss Franny Block said as she started in on her story. Fort Sumter? I said. It was the firing on Fort Sumter that started the war, said Amanda. Okay, I said. I shrugged. Well, Litmus was 14 years old. He was strong and big, but he was still just a boy. His daddy, Artley W. Block, had already enlisted, and Litmus told his mama that he could not stand by and let the South get beat. And so he went to fight. Miss Franny looked around the library, and then she whispered, Men and boys always want to fight. They are always looking for a reason to go to war. It is the saddest thing. They have this abiding notion that war is fun, and no history lesson will convince them differently. Anyway, Litmus went and enlisted. He lied about his age. Yes, ma'am. Like I said, he was a big boy, and the army took him, and Litmus went off to war just like that, left behind his mother and three sisters. He went off to be a hero, but he soon found out the truth. Miss Franny closed her eyes and shook her head. What truth? I asked her. Why, that war is hell, Miss Franny said with her eyes still closed. Pure hell. Hell is a cuss word, said Amanda. I stole a look at her. Her face was pinched up even more than usual. War, said Miss Franny, with her eyes still closed, should be a cuss word too. She shook her head and opened her eyes. She pointed at me, and then she pointed at Amanda. You, neither of you, can imagine. No, ma'am. Amanda and me said at exactly the same time. We looked real quick at each other and then back at Miss Franny. You cannot imagine. Litmus was hungry all the time and he was covered with all manner of vermin, fleas and lice. And in the winter, he was so cold, he thought for sure he would freeze to death. And in the summer, why there's nothing worse than war in the summertime. It stinks so. And the only thing that made Litmus forget that he was hungry and itchy and hot or cold was that he was getting shot at. And he got shot what he got shot at quite a bit and he was nothing more than a child did he get killed i asked miss franny good grief said amanda she rolled her eyes now opal miss franny said i wouldn't be standing in this room telling this story if he was killed i wouldn't exist no ma'am he had to live but he was a changed man he was a changed man yes ma'am a changed man he walked back home when the war was over. He walked from Virginia all the way back to Georgia. He didn't have a horse. Nobody had a horse except for the Yankees. He walked. And when he got home, there was no home there. Where was it? I asked her. I didn't care if Amanda thought I was stupid. I wanted to know. Why? Miss Franny shouted so loud that when Dixie and Amanda Wilkinson and me all jumped, the Yankees burned it. Yes, ma'am, burned it to the ground. What about his sisters? Amanda asked. She moved around the desk and came and sat on the floor. She looked up at Miss Franny. What happened to them? Dead. Dead of typhoid fever. Oh, no, Amanda said in a real soft voice. And his mama? I whispered. Dead, too. And his father? Amanda asked, what happened to him? He died on the battlefield. Litmus. Litmus was an orphan? I asked. Yes, ma'am, said Miss Franny Block. Litmus was an orphan. This is a sad story, I told Miss Franny. It sure is, said Amanda. I was amazed that she was agreeing with me about something. I'm not done yet, Miss Franny said. When Dixie st started to snore, and I nudged him with my foot to try to make him quit. I wanted to hear the rest of the story. It was important to me to hear how Litmus survived after losing everything he loved. Okay, 
that's the end. So you're going to have to wait till tomorrow to hear the rest of that story about litmus. All right. See you tomorrow.